This afternoon, government is being accused of deliberate negligence in the escalating tensions in Boko. It follows the imposition of a 6 to 6 curfew on the troubled town, following renewed tension and clashes which have spread across of the upper east and northeast regions from the weekend tension. Pin the recent disturbance on the arrival of the rival chief into the Boko Township. Let's give you a bit more from what the government has been saying. But first, let's try and detail for you what this conflict is about in relation to Boko and where we are at this particular point in time. And that's going to come up on your screens right now, uh, how long the chief Tansi dispute has protracted up until this point, and then the difficulties as well in relation to... So that's it on your screens right now. We know that over 200 fatalities since November of 2021, uh, five deaths in gun-related clashes in February of 2024, and more than 15 fatalities reported in a recent clash. Uh, a bit more for you in relation to what we know about the Boku uh, situation. And the, the underlying causes have been long standing chief tension dispute between the Kusasi and Mamprosi groups. And we know that there's been influx of sophisticated arms, including AK 47 and G3 rifles likely smuggled from Burkina Faso. It's been a hotbed for suspected terrorist activities, exacerbating the conflict situation in the area as well. And a bit more for you in relation to that. What are the implications as we're learning of this afternoon? Over 1,000 people have been displaced to neighboring towns of Bogatanga, Navrongo, and Sandema, increasing pressure on local resources in these areas where the displays have had to seek shelter. There's been widespread business closures and high unemployment rate due to the instability within the township, uh, as a matter of fact. Also, we know that this has affected uh, healthcare delivery, 27 maternal deaths reported between 2021 and 2022 due to the restricted healthcare access in the area. And 246 teachers, uh, we know, have requested transfers from, uh, from 2021 to 2023, as we have it. In fact, we know that a while back, residents were appealing to civil servants to begin to return to the township. Let's go over now to the security analyst, Emmanuel Kuting, uh, who's joining us via the telephone line. Let's get a bit more from him in relation to the details we've been providing to you and also our uh, exit statement, which announced the, the curfew. Mr. Kuting, I appreciate that you could speak to us. There's the, the arguments being made and being made strongly about government negligence in the escalation of tensions that we've seen, particularly in that interior ministry statement, which says that the continuous stay of this rival chief in the Boku township will continue to bring about problems. The big question everybody's asking is if government is aware of this, why hasn't any action been taken up to now? Thank you so much for having me. A very good afternoon to your cherished listeners. In fact, uh, uh, it's, it's about time to call a state, a state on the Boku issue. The security agencies are on top of their work. But the problem in Boko is politics. And if you look at the historical antecedents of the Boko chieftaincy crisis, it predates independence. And for government to come out to say that the continuity of the team in Boko will create security tensions, it speaks volumes. It means the future is so pregnant. And I want to say this. You see, Boku has become an embarrassment, so to speak, on the country. And you recall that when an arrest warrant was placed on this team, the Montreal went to the High Court, and they could not overturn that. 
Subsequently, they went to the appeals court, and government refused to file an appearance, and that gave rise to the over, over, overturning of the uh, uh, arrest warrant. And later on, government decided to play the ostriches by filing a, uh, an appeal against the the uh, 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 the, uh, the of the arrest warrant. Look, the president was in the region not. Uh, some few weeks ago, and that was when all these things started, mm. and the chief was sent to Boko. To me, I want to appeal to my fellow Nordners. I'm a very proud Nordner. We should not allow politicians to use us as pawns for their own political gain. And Boko has suffered for far too long. You know, right. some people have lost their lives. And if you recall, the Barclays Bank in Boko was one of the best performing banks in the, in the whole country. Look at Boku today, a complete shadow of itself. And politicians will not still stay away. They are still, still using Boku for their own political gains. Why is this thing happening in, a, a, in some few weeks to an election? Well, that... There is more we don't know. And I think that this government has prescribed the solution. They should take eminent steps to get the chief out of Boku if the whole interior minister, uh, ministry statement will mm. point to the fact that the continuous sale of the chief in Boku will bring about security tension or the continuous security tension in Boku, what prevents the government from acting? You have prescribed the solution. Is that not it? All you need to do is to act. And to me, look at the money. The money the government has expanded on this frequency conflict. Right. If there are used resources for the development of Boku, mm. Boku would have been a better place. So my dear brothers who are, are listening to me, I, I am a pain that I'm in Nordland and we have allowed politicians to use us and, uh, and we are not coming together to fight our common enemy that is poverty. Right. Just, just briefly on, on the politics bit, we're just hearing from a news conference in relation to the Chief Tensi Affairs Minister who's uh, making the argument that that's not the case and that everybody should shun making the arguments that politics is playing a hand in the conflicts that we're seeing in, in Boko at this particular point in time. What would be your response to the Chief Tensi Minister and this argument he's making? I think his statements are belated, so to speak, at this moment. The drawings were, uh, the drawings were on the board. And uh, if you speak to the security uh, uh, intelligence officers on the ground, they have always provided the government with accurate intelligence. But government has always failed to act. Look, a year ago, I did an analysis of the Boku uh, 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 frequency issue, mm. given the historical antecedents. And the subsequent analysis I did, we brought the leaders of the student faction. I remember Honorable Cletus Avoka spoke for the Kusasis and one other doctor from the Mampusi. All government needed to do at that time was to set up a National Truth and Reconciliation Commission and give this student faction an opportunity to vent their anger. Then a white paper is issued and then we implement it. Right. So it cannot be the case that two people are fighting over one thing and there is not a true owner. So it means that there is something under. And it can never be anything but politics. Mr. Kute, let's uh, leave the conversation here. I'm sure in the coming days, as the, the curfew continues, we'll see where it takes all of us. But in relation to that statement by the Interior Minister, let's bring you the excerpt right now uh, where they have maintained, uh, amongst many other things, that the continual presence of this rival chief uh, continues to pose a risk to security in that part of the country and what we're discussing at this particular point in time. In fact, there have been ramifications which we've been bringing to you since yesterday in relation to what this means. And you heard Mr. Kuti make reference to that. But let's hear from the Chief Tensi Affairs Minister, Stephen Asamoah Bwati, speak to the politics of it and asking that as much as possible, the misrepresentation and politicization of the Boko conflict uh, by factions uh, be shunned. As to the numbers of deaths 
um, record from our sources puts at 16. Um, that's official. Um, when conflicts start in some areas, difficult to sometimes pick it up until later um, uh, people go in there. But um, officially, uh, 16. But it's one too many. So, uh, in that, indeed, we need to arrest the situation very quickly. In terms of how the driver chief ended up in Boko, I'll leave that to security agencies to answer that. Um, it's unfortunate he did. Um, it's something that we have to find answers to and also to try and deal with it because his very presence is creating the problems. And indeed, as you read from the statement yesterday, um, it's, it's, it's causing a lot of unrest and unease and tension. So let's, as I said, leave that to secret agencies.